Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this really awesome set of red and white Christmas nails. All right, y'all, I wasn't gonna record this, but I'm just sitting here making myself a new set of nails for when I take these off. Oh gosh, I got polish on me. I've been making nails for other people as well, but um, just when I take these off, I'm making myself a new set, and I'm like, hmm, let me record it, I guess. A lot of people ask me about nail designs. So I already have my nails all my little stands here and I see I've got a piece of glitter or something stuck in my putty but anyway this is just sticky tack you know that stuff that you get to put on like the back of poster boards and stuff to stick up on the wall that's all that is and then I stick the nails on top of it so I have my buffing sander block thingy here these were like 99 cents at Sally's and all I'm doing is I'm just buffing the nail just to take off that excess shine. Why do we do that? If you don't do that, your polish isn't gonna stick very well. It's gonna peel right off, okay? And I see that a lot with people who order nails from people. <laughs> They're like, you know, the polish just peeled right off. That's because they don't prep the nail properly. Now, if you're getting ready to stamp on your, cause we're gonna stamp a design on here. When you're getting ready to do this on your natural nail, no, you don't need to buff it. Just polish your nails as normal. Okay, and then just move on to the stamping phase. But as you can see, all that I did here, I'm just removing that shine. See how it's kind of dull right there? Just take the shine off of all the nails. All right, now that they're sanded, sometimes with these nails, you see how it has like that little, like a little sharp barb at the, at the end there. I just kind of put my finger on the nail to hold it on. No, the oil from my hands is not hurting this. And then just kind of file it around just to make sure it is nice and rounded. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, I put my eyes out with those. It's so sharp. They're not as sharp as they look. <laughs> They're really not because you can see I'm kind of rounding the edges here. Of course, if you're doing your natural nails, then you don't have to worry about this. Let's just see if this one needs it. Most of them don't need it. Some of them do. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm just getting them on my stand here. So now you're going to pick whatever you want for your base color. You can see I'm kind of alternating colors here, staying with the Christmas theme. I don't have any white polish except for this Sally Handsome Insta Dry, and I also use this polish for stamping. Someone asked me the other day, is there any stamping polish that I can use from a drug store? Sally Hansen Insta Dry, I have used many times to stamp. Um, and it comes in all different colors. Here's some black. Um, I prefer the Maniology polish because they have such beautiful colors and their polishes are very opaque and just wonderful for stamping. It's pretty much foolproof with their polish. Um, but if you have to get something from the drugstore, Sally Hansen Insta Dry is what I would recommend. That's the polish that I had started off stamping with. I've been stamping my nails for many years. Before stamping was cool, I was stamping my nails, okay? Um, way before my days as a YouTuber. And then, let me tell you, a lot of people say, well, why did you stop wearing your artificial nails? Y'all hear me make fun of my ex quite a bit, right? He was um, not a very good person, and he destroyed... The majority of my nail art supplies at one time. And Maniology really took a chance with me and um, provided me with supplies and everything. And um, I will forever support them and be grateful to them for that. So that's why I pump Maniology stuff. And their stuff's really awesome. You know, I love their stuff. So and their plates are better quality than the ones that I was using. But anyway, now I'm painting this red. And this color here has been one of my favorite colors for a while. It's Red Pearl by China Glaze. And you can get this at Sally's. Um, go to the China Glaze website. Um, pretty much any place that sells salon quality items for your nails, you can get that color there. But this is a very sheer color. And this is why I say you, you have to be careful with what polish you use for stamping designs. Because as thin, you can see that as thin as this polish is, it would not stamp very well at all. So that's why you need a very thick, very opaque polish for stamping. So I am doing those. So I'm gonna set that over there and let that dry. And then I'm gonna come back and put on a second coat because usually, I'm gonna show you this bottle. This is an old bottle, it's chipping. Like I said, the color is red pearl. 
I usually have to do two, sometimes even three coats of this color to get a really, really good coating on the nail. There we go. So whatever polish you're using, just polish and uh, then we'll come back and we will decorate them. I'm trying to zoom in here. All right, so now I wanna start stamping my red design and I'm gonna use the Maniology Plate M338. So let's get everything ready. I have my acetone open and ready to go. Whoa, I have some packing tape here. Let's scoot this over. I have packing tape. Some people use lint rollers. I much prefer packing tape as opposed to a lint roller to clean my stamper. I'm just gonna put that tape right there. We have our scraping card and we have our stamper. This is from Maniology as well. I think they have some of the best sticky stampers I have ever used. I've used a bunch of different brands and I think I think I like theirs the best. So I'm going to stamp onto the white nail, la la, white nail <laughs> with some red paint. And like I said, this is too thin to stamp with, but I'm going to be using this from Maniology. They're stamping polish in the color Kesar. So let's just shake that up. Now, when you're stamping, let's go ahead and take this nail off here. When you're stamping, you want to put your polish on the plate, scrape it. Don't hold your card straight up like this. You want to kind of hold it at an angle. Let's pick this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Don't hold it straight up like this. Hold it kind of at an angle like this. That way you get a very smooth application of your polish and it doesn't skip. I just called and messed up my video. <laughs> but anyway, what I was saying is that way it doesn't skip and you just get better results that way. So you put your, your polish on, then you need to work quickly, okay? Because if you let your polish dry down here in the design, you're not gonna get a very smooth result. So, and this is a big design here. So I'm just gonna put a good amount of polish, take my scraper card and just scrape off the excess. And then take my stamper straight down on top. Don't put a whole lot of pressure behind it because when you put a lot of pressure on it, with the stamper, you're just pressing the polish further down into your design and you're not gonna get it to pick up very well. I just very lightly just pounce and then bring it back up. All right, so I'm trying to decide here where exactly I want this. I like that snowflake right there in the center. So I'm just gonna press onto the nail. I'll bring it over and back this way. Make sure the design is on there. And then sometimes the design will lift at the edges. Just take your finger and press that down. You can go back here in a little bit with a file if you need to and just gently file off any of the excess design that might be hanging down off the edge of the nail, okay? But I like to just take my finger and just kind of smooth it down like so. And now I'm gonna put this right back here. So now I'll take the tape, see? And just got the design right off of there. Never ever use acetone or anything else like that on your stamping plate. I mean, your um, stamper here, you will destroy it. So let's not do that. This handy dandy little tool here, also from Maniology, holds your cotton swab. Just getting some acetone here and you thoroughly clean your plate between every stamp. Because if you don't, then you have that dried polish down in your design and it's not gonna pick up well. All right, so now I've got the thumb here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and stamp that one. And some polish here, about a third of the way down. Holding my car, just scraping gently all the way down. Taking this, I said we'll try to get this one just straight down. And there's your design. Now I got a little bit of excess polish right there that I don't want on there. What do you do when that happens? Or like if you're stamping and you pick up part of another design that you don't want on your nail. I just take a little bit of tape and boink. See, it just takes it right off. Then just stick that over there to use again. Now, once you get your polish on your stamper, you can really slow down. You don't have to be so quick with it now. Let's see. Let's put it right there. Just kind of roll. There we go. I'm just using my finger just to smooth down the edges. Now, I'm going to stamp on the red nails as well, but they're not dry. They're not ready. <laughs> so... Now that this has set for a second, their polish is pretty fast drying. So let's get this here. 
Now I'm going to, I want to think I want to put some rhinestones on here, but before I do that, I want to put a top coat. And this is the Maniology Smudge Free Top Coat. It will not smudge the design that you just stamped on there, which is awesome. Just brush that real lightly right on top, like so. And that just seals it all in and it brightens it up. It just makes it look so good. <laughs> Let's get a little bit more right there. All right, so we'll do the same to that one. And then I'm just going to let them sit over here and dry. All right, so I believe the red is dry. So I want to do some candy stripes here. And this is the Maniology Plate M341. I'm going to be using this stripe here. Now, listen, let me answer another question. A lot of people say, well, what if my nails are really long like yours and these designs are short? Yeah, but if you look here, see like this snowflake here? It picks up again down here. Same here. And this is, this is true with, you know, a lot of their plates. So if you pick up this design here, you can stamp it. Then just pick up the design again and just stamp it up here. You know, you can, you can stack them. You just have to be careful to, you know, line everything up. So I want to go with this candy stripe here. And just so carefully with your stamper straight down and pick it up. There we go. And once again, I've got just a little bit of this design. Well, not really design, just a big old blob of <laughs> polish that I don't want on there. So now let's get our nail. I'm going to put this stripe right here at the bottom and just press it on there. Back up and then just fix it like so. Now this is an example of having to layer the design because you see where that stopped right there? So now I'm going to have to redo it, you know, pick up the design again and then just stamp up here after I slowly and carefully line everything up. And that can take me a minute to do, so I'm probably not going to do that on camera, but you get the idea of what I'm saying to do. So let me do that and we'll take a look. Okay, so yeah, it does take me a minute to line it up and I've got like a little boo-boo right there that you can fix very easily, you know, just take a little tiny brush and just touch up that white there. But um, now I've got the entire nail stamped. And of course, you know, if you have a brush, like a fine line brush that you do your line work with, then you don't have to worry about this. But I'll do fine line work later. I'm just showing you how to use stamping plates. So I think I want to do that there. And then let's do another candy stripe on this nail. I'll do that and come back. All right. So this is what we have so far. Moving along, let's do something with this one right here. So I was sitting here playing with these snowflakes here, and we are back to our other plate, the M338, and it does have some individual snowflakes here, and I think, um, I don't know. Let's go for that one right there. And I think I'll put a rhinestone on that one, if I can find uh, my adhesive. I have a tube over here, but I don't know if I'll have enough in it to do what I wanna do. So there's my snowflake. And then just take your tape here, just pick off that excess, boink, 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 boink. There we go. Okay. Get that out of the way. Get this other nail over here. Now, of course, everything I'm doing to these nails, I'm going to do with that set over there. So let's see if we could just get this maybe kind of down here at the bottom. Just stamp that on. And there you go. There's that one snowflake down at the bottom. I think that would be really pretty with a rhinestone on it. Now, when I do rhinestones, I always, always top coat first. Then put the rhinestone on and then top coat again. But you don't go over the rhinestone, okay? Because it'll dull it down. I don't care how shiny your top coat is. It's going to dull down your rhinestones. Put the top coat on again, but go around it. All right. So I'm going to top coat this with our smudge free top coat. I'm going to stamp the other set. And like I said, if I could find some adhesive, we'll put on a rhinestone. I'll show you how to do that, but I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I have my rhinestones here. These are nail rhinestones. The thing with these is they have to be able for UV light to pass through them in order, you know, to cure your adhesive here. Now, this is my favorite rhinestone adhesive. This is by McCart. You can get it on Amazon. Cured with UV and LED lights. So anyway, I'm just going to put one rhinestone in the center of that snowflake there. And I think this one will be just fine. We'll pick it up with my wax pencil here. Let's see one. There we go. Nope. There was two attached to that one. 
two there. I think those two are like glued together or something. Anyway, here's one. So let's put it here, make sure it's flipped over to the correct side. So I think I'll just take this off. Now, can y'all see? I've got my light here. I'm trying to get everything in frame so that y'all can see it. That there, and I'm just gonna take this adhesive and I'm just gonna put just a tiny blob right, ooh, I had an air bubble, right in the center of that snowflake there. And this will not set up or dry or harden up unless it is cured under light, okay? So it gives you plenty of time to move things around, get it exactly where you want it to be. Now I'm gonna stick this under the light and I'm gonna set it for, let's do 90 seconds. And it's going to cure that adhesive and hold the, the rhinestone in place. So now let us just get another one. Make sure it's facing upwards. And I usually run them through twice. I want to make double sure <laughs> that the adhesive is cured. So I will run it through again. If you have a toothpick or something, you can use a toothpick to, um, to drop this adhesive right where you want it. I'm just going to put it, it looks okay, right about mm, sliding around a lot. All right, right there. So let's just set that under there and allow it to cure as well. And then I'll run it through for another 90 seconds. But that's that's all of the rhinestones I think I'm going to put on here. I think it'll be just fine like that. So let's let that cure. All right, these should be done. Now, like I said, we're just going to put a top coat on again. I'm going to go back in with this Sally Hansen Insta-Dry top coat. Because it's not touching the stamped design, okay? It's going on top of the other top coat that we just used, so it's not going to dissolve your stamping design. And you can see, let's try to zoom in so you can see me here. You see how I'm just going around the stone there, okay? Just going around it, not on top, just going around. Okay? Because on my own nails, as I wear them, you know, they do kind of dull down. And I like to put on a fresh top coat every few days. And this is what I use for my everyday wear. But I'm just so careful that I actually don't get any on the stone. But anyway, I'm just going to put another coat of top coat on all the nails. And then they will be done. I have a video on how I actually apply them that I filmed quite a while back. I'll have a link to that down in the description box and a pinned comment. But anyway, I hope that you liked this video. If you would, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Check me out on other forms of social media, the least all of which will be in the description box down below. And I will see y'all later. Bye.